Please. This is yours. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't have to talk you off. That's right. That's the LT. This meeting to order the uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, this this mm -hmm. is called Board of Selection to order. Okay, very good. Okay, all well set. Okay, very good. Thank you. This meeting of the RMLD um, Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners being videotaped at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street, Reading, Mass. The meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. I'm going to read the Code of Conduct. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the Chair on items in, on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions and comments from the public be directed to the Chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional, courteous manner when addressing the Board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the Chair, all persons addressing the Board should state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the Chair to maintain order on all public comment and, ens and ensuing discussion. Uh, tonight we have people on the phone. We have John and uh, Dave. John Stempeck is on the phone, as is Dave Talbot tonight. Okay, John and uh, yes, Dave. Hello, everybody. Okay, hey, very John. good. Hey, Dave. All right, so let me just, let me just kind of go over the order of which, because uh, I want to keep this orderly. Um, I'm going to read a statement first. Um, at which point uh, the commissioners, if they want to add anything after that, at which point I will open up for public comment from anybody in the, in the pub on the public comment. Uh, the statement will be about the, uh, the subcommittee um, in terms of that. And so at, at that point, I would certainly entertain any public comment that anybody would have after that. And we, we, I ask everybody to keep it orderly at this point. Um, the first thing I want to go through is I want to go through the timetable as to uh, where things have gone in <coughs> terms of the, the negotiating the subcommittee on the negotiating the payment to the town um, as i'm going to read the instructional motion which has been provided by mr enzinger tonight uh, the motion was to instruct the board of selectmen in light of the town's difficulties in the t difficult financials to, to study the reading municipal light department with an objective of an increasing annual revenues to the town that was the april of 2017 town meeting motion uh, basically in terms of that uh, we it took some time to get the members of that particular subcommittee it was agreed to have a subcommittee two members of the uh, two members of the commission myself and mr. Stempeck uh, to we had a member two members of the uh, CAB mr. Hooper and mr. Cohen who represents Reading and we also had a member of the Board of Selectmen, which is Mr. Enzinger, who's here tonight. Uh, it took some time to get the members in place. Uh, once the members in place, on, December, on September the 27th, we actually had our first meeting at that point. Uh, in terms of what was discussed at that meeting, was just some general ideas as to what outlines each of the groups uh, kind of had at that point. It was left at that point that um, the members would go back to their individual groups and then they would come back to us at a, at, a, at a period of time when they had some more input. There were no numbers discussed at that first meeting at that point. Uh, that basically, I appeared in front of the uh, CAB back in uh, the end of October, I believe it was the 27th is the date I had that, and made a presentation of the financial structure to the CAB. Uh, November came along, that was town meeting. December comes along, that's Christmas. Tracy, um, the department over here, as in the middle of December, tried to get a meeting set up for early in January uh, as best we could. We were unable to get all the members together at that point in terms of that. Uh, at that point, it was agreed upon to have a meeting in the, in the month of February in terms of that. So we met in, we met in February. Uh, at that point, uh, the RML, I put forward a proposal. There was a counter proposal from the Board of Selectmen and that's where kind of things stand at that point. At the March, at the March meeting was the first time that uh, we had discussed numbers at that point. Um, you know, one of the things that 
you know, that was one of the things that, you know, we can have a lot of blame going around with each of us on each side. We can all point fingers tonight. Um, you know, the one thing I ask is that, you know, we try to work together and get this thing resolved at this point. Um, you know, so with that in mind, um, we have worked, you know, I'm going to, in that spirit, going forward, uh, we have worked through a number, the department and the, my, ourselves mm -hmm. have worked through numerous iterations of worksheets and analysis to arrive at what we feel is a good solution to the issue at hand. However, it is not our intent to debate or resolve the, RML, the RMLD payment to the town tonight. A committee that has been set up, as we've talked about, in terms of where, where we are on that, has been set up. Let me get the right page here. Uh, one of the things, uh, the, you know, one of the things we want to do is the RMLD wants to support the town of Reading and believes it has found a solution that will work for Reading and for the ratepayers and fit into the financials of the town at the town of uh, the town of at the RMLD of, at this time. Uh, there is another committee meeting scheduled for March 12th at which time the RMLD will offer a refined and expanded version that we feel will benefit both Reading and our other towns and also specifically for the ratepayers. If accepted at all by all parties, the committee will recommend that the RMLD board approve and implement this approach. It is our expectation this issue can be resolved and any final recommendation voted for that final approval at the, will be at the March RMLD board meeting. I've asked the department, since the subcommittee is scheduled to meet at 5.30 that night, I've asked the department to schedule a 7.30 meeting of the commission that same night, right afterwards, so that if any agreement is can, we have the commission to review it right away and potentially approve it at that night if, if we want to at this point. Uh, the following is the reason we are not attempting to negotiate tonight is for several reasons. Uh, one, the committee's already been tasked with, the, with the, this assignment. The RMLD has to vet the proposed approach and test it against the capital needs of the organization. The RMLD has been working over the past couple of months with a consultant on what is revenue erosion and the effect it's going to have on capital due to solar and possible industrial to commercial conversions which have impacted revenues by more than 1% and a flat to slight decrease is expected to continue. Solar and battery combinations, uh, combination systems impact have not been included as yet in the projections. The RMLD is also reviewing other liabilities such as OPEB and pension funding contributions. Uh, the monthly meetings, as you can see tonight, we have other things that we need to deal with on the agenda. Um, our ratepayers deserve a full, a, a well thought out and deliberated outcome which the committee is intending to provide. The RMLD has an obligation as a not-for-profit municipality to provide for lower cost electricity, excellent customer service, and excellent reliability. As everyone knows, there are three other communities that are involved in this. And those representatives are represented by the, by the CAB members. They need to be uh, appropriately updated and involved with any final recommendations. In summary, it is our intent to address the issues of the, of the RMLD payments to the town of Reading thoroughly, expeditiously, fairly, and in the best interest of all the ratepayers in mind. Thank you. Any commissioners want to add anything at this point? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I just want to echo what Phil said. As a citizen of Reading and a member of this board, I think it's important that we do whatever we can at RMLD to help address the fiscal pressure that's on the town of Reading in, one, in a way that doesn't negatively impact the ratepayers in all four towns. So I just echo that. I believe we have a good process to continue forward with the committee to reach resolution, hopefully, in the next month. I hope on, on March, this, the, on March, the March 13th meeting. Mr. Yep. Mr. Chairman, uh, yep. if I could make a comment as well. Please, go ahead, Mr. Stempak. Um, it, I'm, I'm hoping you can all hear me okay. Yep. Uh, first, I'd just like to thank the selectmen for attending the meeting. Uh, and I wish I could be there in person, but this trip was planned for over a year, and everyone knows the cost of uh, changing plane tickets. So it's really, really difficult. Um, as um, our chairman has mentioned, uh, you know, we are in a partnership with 
both Reading, part of Linfield, and Wilmington. And it's only through this partnership that we as consumers can realize the lowest electric rates in perhaps all of Massachusetts because of our group buying power. Without that, and we've looked at it, uh, your rates will double, maybe even triple if you're owned by Eversource or National Grid. So being a part of a municipal electric source uh, as a group, we're capable of doing this. And it's not just our, our rate payers in terms of consumers, but also many of our industrial and commercial customers that will see it, such as analog devices or Teradyne or other major electricity users. We know that Reading's got a number of financial issues uh, driven by a number of different things that have happened over the past 10 years, and we don't need to go into the elaboration of that right now, but we understand the difficulty that you face of trying to make this work within our town. But we're, we're, we live in Reading, too, and we want to preserve our our excellent school system, all of my children went through it, it was fantastic. I think we've got a great infrastructure in town, and I think we've developed a, a super Reading culture, and I think we just need to preserve that as well. But as our uh, chairman has mentioned, 80% or more of the electricity that we buy and sell is outside of Reading. So the agreement with these other towns mandates that we have a fair and equitable solution and sharing of any money generated. We've honored this for over 20 years. So, um, we, uh, of course, we want to help the town of Reading, uh, and we want to, but we also want to preserve our charter in terms of all of our constituency, and that includes the citizens' advisory board from these four towns. It's not an insignificant task, and we cannot show favoritism to Reading without endangering this responsibility. Um, so, I think we all just need to take a deep breath and kind of let us do our job and i think we do have a as our, our uh, chairman has mentioned uh, found a mechanism to help everybody in this process uh, without endangering our capital budgeting program we just can't pick a number out of the air and hope it works we need to blend it into our capital program and our town distributions and we need to live within the state mandated cap on our return so um in any event uh I just, you know, as I thought of this meeting tonight, I kept remembering the phrase, united we stand and divided we fall. And it's certainly true today as when it was first uttered. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak. Okay. Mr. Mr. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to repeat what's been said. I would say that two things, a number of us are also town meeting members, so we're acutely aware of the uh, the challenges ahead for the town of Reading and uh, fully supportive of that. So we're, I hope that'll be uh, obvious in terms of the path forward and uh, we've asked uh, everyone here to work as a team so I hope we can count on all of us to do that and, and reach the solution which I think can be a win-win for Reading as well as the rest of our towns. Okay. Dave, you want to add anything? Public Finance Committee to order. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, Dave, Dave Talbot. Dave Talbot, you want to say something? Dave, are you there? Dave Talbot? No, I, I thought it was on. Okay. You want anything? Uh, no. Dave is in the process of driving, so it's possible that he's uh, maybe going through some areas with uh, poor reception. Okay. okay. No. Thanks. Right. Good. So I'm good. at this point, uh, George, do you want to add anything? No, um, I think you guys have uh, Okay. Said it. At this point, I would open up for anybody who wants public comment. I do ask that you come up to the speak to the microphone, so that uh, the cable TV, Mr. Arena. Uh, Mr. Martino, what's I ask that you come up to the microphone, please, so the cable TV can hear. Okay. Will you cover the same topic again under your report from the chair? Or no, we will not. We will not at this point. This this will this will cover it in terms of that point. So, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. I mean. I meant to ask, add that. Uh, first of all. Um, Thank you for your, your comments and the, in addition to the comments, the tone, which is, I think, one of trying to find a path forward. I do think it would be remiss if we didn't reflect that we are here tonight in the latter half of February discussing a commitment that was made in April, and I fully understand the calendar. And the uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, but could you move the uh, phone closer to the uh, speaker, please? Um, I don't know if we can, you're going to be able to do that. a way to do that. I don't know if we can do that. It's wireless. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it is wireless? Oh, okay. Oh, oh. it is Whoa. very capable. Whoa. Wow. Very easy. Whoa. <laughs> Go ahead, John. <laughs> See, you could have done that too. <laughs> um, we're here tonight really about two issues. One is about timeliness and the other is about process. Um, we're here in the latter half of February discussing a, an instructional motion made almost a year ago. And while I fully understand that meeting schedules get difficult, I do think that it's hard not to listen to the discussion and conclude that there's at least was an opportunity for greater urgency that perhaps wasn't um, achieved. Five months without a first meeting would seem to be preventable at some level. Having said that, uh, we are where we are. I am heartened by your comments about taking the instructional motion to heart. Um, Reading, the town of Reading is in a very unusual spot and we are moving towards a, our ballot question on April 3rd. For those listening at home, the discussion tonight has no bearing on the April 3rd override vote at all. The discussion tonight is purely on the matter of improving the relationship between the town of Reading and Reading Municipal Light, which is an asset and an entity owned by the town of Reading. The, the, the timing and the calendar is purely coincidental. The, the two have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Um, I would like to suggest that we actually amplify the effort further and that we would add a second Board of Selectmen and for that pur purpose I would volunteer myself in okay. addition to Mr. Ensminger. Hi. That provides a, a body, a, a greater amount of activity that we can throw in the mix um, and try to establish a greater task tension around the end objective. Um, I do believe Reading Municipal Light has done a fantastic job at running its, its business. You look at your balance sheet, you've got an outstanding, you've got a strong balance sheet. You've got 15 million in unrestricted cash. You've got, um, and, and adding to your equity position at a million or two or three million dollars a year. That's a, that's a growing business. That's a fantastic business and we don't want to do anything that puts that at risk. On the other hand, a strong Perform, annual performance like that clearly can support some additional support to the town of Reading. Um, so I'm committing here tonight as a member of the elected board for the town to get this over the finish line and it's going to happen on a schedule that um, is accelerated I think by virtue of having more resources. Um, I'd like to see some progress such that by annual town meeting in April we can give a status report and my objective would be to have this wrapped up no later than the end of our fiscal year in, in June, absolutely okay. long before then. Okay. But I want to have a status report for the town meeting one year to the date when the original commitment was made so we can at least show progress to goal. Mm -hmm. And I don't think today we can. I think there's meetings and discussions and good feelings, but there's absolutely nothing tangible that I can put my hands on. So by, again, that April date, I'd want to have something tangible to report on and then progress to goal. Okay. Um, I do think this is one of the most critical aspects facing our town. We're blessed to have Reading Light in that it's an asset for the community. Um, the question is how does it best operate within the town and how does it best improve the town's position. So again, I'm heartened by your opening comments. I, I've uh, had a chance to talk to some of you individually and I look forward to working together with Mr. Ensminger and the members of uh, uh, RMLD Light Board uh, on this topic. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Arena, would you stay there for one just one sure. I the original mo the original setup of the subcommittee did call for two selectmen at one time. So you certainly can have another you certainly are welcome to be part of Thank that, you. that committee. Thank you. Uh, I also would like to see this wrapped up by annual town meeting also. So I echo your commitment on that from my standpoint. And I think there's time to do that. With the few weeks we have left, I think there's a chance to get the, that done. The, the one thing I would like to offer to you is I watched the meeting the other night. You said you needed some more information. I would offer our legal counsel to meet with the town's legal counsel to um, to work out to go over some of the what the laws that we have on that. Yeah, that's already happening in parallel. That's a completely okay. parallel discussion. That's fine. That, I that's I on was its own. Aware that was happening. That's on its own track and schedule. But this discussion, I think, is the primary objective to get this done. Okay. This um, and I think, given the time and the task tension and the talent. There's absolutely no reason we can't have something to report in April. 
and a nice bow on the package, you know, sometime in the May timeframe, well before the end of the fiscal year. All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm having a hard time hearing you, just to let you know. Okay. Oh. Need to move that. Let me uh, let um, this back. <laughs> just <laughs> as. Um, oh. <laughs> we. Okay. Being a former finance committee chairman. You guys hear me? I, I can't hear. I, I heard. Uh, okay. Very clearly, but not. Uh, Being not, a. Not, just, okay. You know. Can you Being hear me? Being a former finance committee chairman at one time, I understand that the yeah. there was a restriction of the finance committee member being on that being actually a member but you can have a liaison and we certainly welcome anybody as a liaison and okay mean a non-voting member I a non-voting member but certainly you, you can a liaison you can come and have your input at the meeting okay okay <laughs> we are scheduled for march the 13th so we'll leave it at 5 30. good what is it 12th dave, dave could you meet your um Mute your, your microphone. Yeah. It's the 12th? Okay, so March the 12th, 5.30 is the meeting. Okay? <laughs> All right, very good. Mr. Berman. Am I going here? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, you're going to need to move the mic. Yeah, just grab it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not heavy. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mr. Chair. Barry Berman, 54 Longview Road, and a member of the Reading Board of Selectmen. I again echo, uh, you know, uh, thanks for actually having us here. This is, I think, the first time that, um, as a member of the Selectmen, I've actually attended one of your meetings. It might have been overdue, and uh, I'd like to actually have you guys come to our meeting from time to time as well. Um, so, a couple, a, a couple of things. First of all. Um, I, I want to echo some of the things said in that you know the, the budget struggles that we're going with right now. Um, partners that we used to have um, really are stepping away from the table. Commonwealth of Massachusetts used to fund 25 percent of our revenue. It's now down to 15. Um, we're going to the, uh, to the taxpayers again to support public safety and education. Um, but one of the things that I, I, I think as a, as a rate payer and as a citizen first and as a selectman last, I do want to just compliment uh, Renning Municipal Light for the services and the rates that they provide, as well as the support that they've done to the town of Reading year after year. Um, some of those folks at home may be thinking that Reading Municipal Light might be a little stingy um, in that what they support to the town. Um, but if you look at our budget, you'll see fully $2.4 million dividend that gets paid to the town of Reading um, currently. And what we're asking for. Um, first of all, um, that's a great partnership that we want to have. Um, one thing I can tell you, if you put sort of a popularity contest um, between any elected official in this town and RMLD, RMLD would probably be the most popular of any uh, 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 of us. So um, we're grateful to have it. What we're really talking about is just what little more can you do? Um, and, and so I don't want to leave the impression that um, with, a, with a great balance sheet, um, that you're, you're, you're kind of being stingy. You're, you're not. It's just that little bit extra. Um, the other piece is that, that I know is that a, a lot of folks should understand that unlike the, on the town side, RMLD fully funds its OPEB obligation. That's, um, uh, and that's part of where those revenues go. So um, you are a good caretaker. Um, we're grateful to have RMLD. I am hopeful I mean, from, and, and just Mr. Pacino, if I can just sort of echo or amplify. So is it the intention to have the group, the subcommittee that's already been empowered meet on the 11th or 12th, I think you said? 12th, March the 12th. 12th, and then the you, um, uh, with the purpose of having an agreement. Now also, Ms. Serena mentioned something, voting members. Is this going to be, is this committee then vote? Uh, no, what I, this, the intention of the committee is to make a recommendation. To that would, each, that to would each be taken back to each of the groups, okay. to both the commission, the CAB, and the board of selectmen, and it'd be the board of, and it'd be the individual boards that take the votes. Okay. On and this. so, so then, um, from what I understand, from what you said, is that that subcommittee meeting will be on the 12th, and then you'll be um, having a regular um, RMLD board meeting. So conceivably, you could 
whatever you you could make that recommendation and that vote and then our right. we're, we're meeting on the 13th so okay I mm -hmm. believe the 13th like um, I said I'm so this could be done and dusted a month before town meeting well that's so. I agree okay. with you know mr. arena I've made the commitment that we would have this for town meeting okay mm -hmm. um, which is I mean I, we are where we are um, you know like writing a term paper sometimes you do it on the last night but when the professor never knows I never right did and, and I so never did that. <laughs> so and I'm hoping that this term paper gets a high grade so um, I'm grateful I, I, I you know um, I know that we'll be well represented on the board and with you and that will come up with something but again I just want folks to understand that RMLD um, does contribute significant funds to the budget of the town of Reading uh, and I just don't want that fact to be lost so thank you Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bert. Do we have any other input? Yeah, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Phil. Would it be possible to schedule a second date in anticipation of a need for one, even though we don't may not need it? Get it on the calendar. Okay, uh, Tracy. Will you circulate uh, a memo and people can supply dates? Tracy will put a mem email out tomorrow. The Monday following, perhaps. Maybe you just. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. So, I have no issue with the Monday following. <coughs> So, okay. Maybe the 12th and the 17th. The 12th and the 17th. No, no, 12th and the 19th, right? 19th. 12th and the 19th, duh. Unless you want to meet on Saturday. If you bring the coffee, we'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other folks? Yes, we have Mr. another Chair, selectman. Thank you. Uh, just to come, up to the, come up to the microphone, please, so the cable TV people can, the people who are, all the, our fans can you watch us. to be us. on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, just it, it, this is a small procedural point I we have to ask the rest of the board of selectmen if if uh, uh, John was nice enough to volunteer or are we all good with having him uh, join this subcommittee we should officially do that the chair makes the call in. yeah yeah okay uh, are those meetings public by the way yes yes, yes they're, they're, they're posted they're posted meetings okay yeah. thanks Yep. Conference room, office superintendent. Uh, sorry, the, uh, yes. Manager. Okay. Um, good luck. Thank you very much. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Enzi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Looking forward to continuing our work on the 12th. Okay. Very good. Good. Thanks, Dean. Thank you, everybody. Will that be the last word on this this evening? This yes, it will be. There will be no no further discussion at this point. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sorry. Hi, uh, John Rogers, 39 Tower Hill Road, North Reading. Uh, those who were uh, paying attention to the last last uh, board meeting will know uh, that might know something uh, about what I'm going to talk about. I just want to mention briefly, since Mr. Chairman, you mentioned solar sort of in passing. Uh, in terms of what's facing RMLD, I guess I would just encourage you, and I will come. I will save my uh, other remarks for another night because uh, I know you've got a lot on your on your calendar. But uh, just encourage you to think about new technology, different because you've got solar, you've got batteries, you've got electric vehicles. We did put solar in our particular house uh, that dropped our our consumption. Seventy percent, seventy six percent of what we produce actually gets exported to the grid. Uh, at, we also bought an electric vehicle, which tripled our consumption. So I would encourage Reading Light not to uh, or encourage you all to see these technologies as potentially a boon. And I would say with 94 houses, residential systems, and among the 20,000 customers, uh, I'm pretty sure residential solar is not part of the reason for, you know, with a, a $100 million in revenue, I'm pretty sure that's rounding error there. So. Uh, and I will say systems, it's clear from the numbers, it's clear from when we are producing, when, when systems are producing, that we are providing a whole lot more benefit than is compensated at this point. So look at solar uh, as, a, as a boon at this point. Uh, I would encourage, and I will be back to encourage the board to change the compensation structure to encourage more solar because, again, as I talked about last month, as I said in the follow-up letter to you all, I think it is a benefit to RMLD, not a threat. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any further comments? Move to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, move to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Five zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's.
reasons why we will take we'll take a, a five minute break if you would at this point yes all right Should we get going again? Yep. Okay. All right. Meeting is readjourned. Right. <laughs> Re is that the right term? Unadjourned. Okay. Very good. Uh, I think we've kind of covered the public comment at this point. So, um, actually, I did watch you. May I just make a quick comment? Sure, if you would. Yeah. So, for those left in our viewing audience at home, I, uh, I've been very pleased. I think we have a strong sense of collaboration and teamwork uh, on all parts so uh, that that alone will I think drive the process and get us over the goal line so okay. very I'm very good. very pleased and thank you mr. chair for your okay. leadership all right very good um, let's uh, I guess we got uh, first up I, I've watched you all on TV because I was not able to make the last meeting because I ca caught the flu <laughs> thank you for not coming <laughs> yes well, I would have had to come with a mask on. I don't think that would have looked pretty. That would have looked good. So, oh. um, so let's move to the uh, approval of the board minutes. Now, I, because we have two members on the phone, everything has to be a roll call vote tonight. Okay. Mr. Chair, if you want to make the motion, please. Well, before, do we have a? We gonna have, do we have any uh, liaison comments from Kate I don't know. Can you you mean, George? I mean, you uh, do you want to add anything? No. no okay. okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, move that the board approve the meeting minutes of December 14th, 2017. It's been moved. Is that seconded? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke? Uh, Mr. O'Rourke, aye. Ms. Pacino, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Mr. Stempak? Mr. Stempak, aye. Mr. Talbot? Mr. Talbot, aye. Okay, very good. Talbot, aye. All right, we've covered item six, which is the uh, subcommittee. And so now we're up to the general manager's report. Um, thank you. I, I'd like to make a request to see if we could have the financials done first because I know Wendy is, um, 
she's feeling a little down and we'd like okay, to Okay, very good. Things. Wendy, why don't you come right up? <laughs> she's done such a great job supporting us all week and we let her go early. Okay, so very good. Angel's going to pick us up, Wendy? Uh, Is that the idea? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make any promises. All right. <laughs> come on right up, Wendy. Very good. We have time, Jane. I'm going to start with the balance okay. sheet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so you should have the financials in front of you. Um, mm -hmm. So as usual, I'd like to start with the balance sheet and just note that, uh, of course, cash is in a strong position. We had to move a little bit of money recently with the capital projects that are going on. We felt as though we didn't uh, move enough money at the end of uh, fiscal year 17 to our construction fund. So in December, we decided to move another $1.2 million uh, as we are allowed to do based on our rate of return of last year. So we took that opportunity to um, help fund the capital projects that maybe were unforeseen at the time. Okay, so we moved $1.2 million. You'll see that line item right there on, on page two, cash construction fund. And you'll see that as a separate line item. I wanted it to stand out so that you would uh, be aware of it. And then um, looking at the balance sheet, our um, capital assets are up $3.7 million from last year, which shows that uh, we're continuing to build on our capital infrastructure. Right now, our um, accounts receivable are pretty much about the same as it, as it was last year this time. And I'd like to say that we are running about 93.8% uh, current as compared to last year of 93.7. So very consistent uh, as we're collecting money. So Jane's group is doing a great job with that. So accounts payable is up about 1.1 million currently, and that just, again, you know, that could be a t the timing of things. So I'm gonna move to uh, cash, it's at page two. So the operating fund is up 1.4 million from last year. And the, um, the depreciation and the construction fund together uh, are, are down about $78,000, which is very insignificant at the time. So page three, everybody seems to like this reconciliation of capital funds, shows you where the money comes to fund the capital projects. And then of course, uh, we, we show the interest that we earn monthly, about almost $30,000 so far on the depreciation fund. And then we transfer the depreciation uh, from the operating fund monthly so that it doesn't skew the financials in a bad way. So uh, right now the depreciation transfer is about $2.1 million, a total source of capital funds of $8.3 million. And so far to date, uh, we've used funds of 2.7, which leaves us at $5.5 million. Okay, Jim, I'm ready. Okay, so looking at the first slide, uh, I like to put into perspective uh, every now and again how our base revenue compares to our operating expenses, what it actually costs us to make money. So currently we have a decrease in um, base revenue of 1%, but it's actually costing us an increase of 1% to get that, to get that amount. So it's a 2% negative? In essence, I mean, in theory, you could say it that way, sure. $13.5 million from 2016 revenue down to 13.4, and our operating expenses from 2016 were 10.1 million, and currently they're 10.2 million. Moving to the next slide, um, I'd like to show you how we're doing on our operating and maintenance expenses overall compared to our budget. So overall, we are um, under budget. December was um, a little bit of a catch-up month, um, mostly because of some storms we had around Christmas time and earlier in the month. So we did incur a little more cost than uh, what we had expected. And then the last, the last slide shows you the trend of uh, base revenue and kilowatt hours sold by month, comparing the first six months of the uh, fiscal year 17 to the first six months of the fiscal year 18. And it shows you that uh, exactly as I pointed out, the base revenue is down 1%, and it also shows you that kilowatt hours are down. And then you can see the little bit of a spike there in December. Um, I asked Jane to look that up for me, and she said it was a, um, 
16 percent increase in heating degree days. So basically it took, um, it, w it was a colder month. So yep. that's why we ended up with more kilowatt hours mm -hmm. sold. So if you look at the page six and seven, if, and if you compare our regular um, actual year-to-date financials compared to the budget, we should be around 50 percent, right, because we're halfway through the year. And our operating and maintenance expenses right now are coming in at an operating income of 46.8 percent. So we're a little bit, overall, we're a little bit over budget, but our operating and maintenance expenses are under budget. Um, so this could be, th this could have a lot to do with power right now because 49.8 percent budget remains in the power and we just, you know, as we do, we play catch up with that every month. Okay. Any questions? questions? Yeah, just one, yes, no. when, you, when earlier when you are talking about expenses running higher than uh, the revenue, uh, revenue or yes. matching, it, was there anything driving that particularly did you notice? Or? Well, I think in December I had talked to Hamid and we did have a couple storms, so m there might have been a little more overtime cost than we had budgeted for at the time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Dave, you said, are we John and uh, Dave Talbot on the phone, you, you all set? Got any questions? Uh, no, I, I think. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, um, I'm just having a hard time hearing it. No, I don't have a question. No. Oh, we need to. We should have moved it over. We should have no, moved it um, over. <laughs> my only comment was it, uh, it, it does track the one percent decrease in uh, revenue that we've been talking about. So I think it's uh, it certainly is a fact that uh, the revenue seemed to be coming down um, as uh, we had predicted. Okay. okay. All right. Very good, Thank you, John. Okay, we're set. Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you. you, Wendy. Colleen, we're back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen. Okay. Yeah, please. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Yep. You don't work in these spreadsheets. Thanks, anymore. Wendy. Yes, Thanks, <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> okay. Okay, I just wanted to um, provide some feedback on the opportunity I had to. Um, uh, to participate in the Public Power Summit, um, it, which was a nationwide networking sponsored by Nextera Energy and uh, Florida Power and Light. Uh, the training sessions included the future outlooks of worldwide energy resources, um, the export import to the United States on all of those different types of resources, including coal and oil, etc., gas pricing and energy pricing. And then we went into the hurricane Irma restoration efforts, so we went into a lot of the operations of, of larger utilities as we compare them to the gritting light. Um, and then we finished up with human resources strategies on you know, new generations that are coming in. And those types of topics. I also had the opportunity to visit uh, Nextera's solar energy uh, lab, where they have a number of different solar um, arrays of which they've been you know, doing testing over time of uh, the most efficient uh, and, and everything that they're installing for their projects and how it's impacting uh, their sales. Uh, their National Wind Operations Center, where they they operate uh, and control over 1,200 wind turbines in one room. It's pretty impressive. And their command center for all of their resources, including hydro, nuclear, solar, and I got to see their power trading floor, which was very interesting. And uh, we, since we have um, uh, our new risk management uh, strategic plan that we're working with Dexterra, it, it really put into perspective how all the different people have to um, you know, participate. This one has to talk to this one with, with all of the trading and information that flows back to us so that we can make decisions uh, to keep our rates low. Um, meeting and discussing all these important factors that relate to how energy will be generated and managed in the future uh, with public power folks from across the country really did has, has helped to add value to the RMLD strate strategic road mapping that we're doing in each of the divisions right now. So thanks again for allowing me to um, and uh, I appreciate it. Okay, great. Little Florida? Yeah. Okay. Did you get to see Florida Power? Yeah. We did good. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Very good. Any questions? No. Okay. Uh, let's move up to Jane. You get you get to take the uh, oh. take that over with you. <laughs> Tracy, can we get one for every point? Except for all the heads. Thank you very much. Commissioners, I'm here to update you on community events, first of all. 
Uh, we've completed the information sessions for our high school art contest. We've attended all the uh, high schools within our service territory as well as had a session here at RMLD. Uh, currently we have 21 students that have signed up for this program. Um, the students have till April 13th to turn in their artwork. So we're very excited about um, what, what we're going to see with that. Um, we're, uh, there's an ongoing effort to update RMLD's website. Currently it's not mobile friendly and a lot of people are using it on their mobile device. So we'll be uh, uh, rolling that out within the next couple of months. We're, we've made some good progress on that and Joyce is heading that effort up. Um, in addition, uh, in the month of April, we'll be holding a Save Energy and Money sessions at all the libraries. Um, we held one here at the RMLD in January, and we had close to 50 people attend. Oh, so there were a lot of great questions, a lot of helpful information, and uh, we'll be going to the libraries and uh, hoping that people attend in good ways to save money and, and to uh, look at their consumption and uh, RMLD's rates and our, our different programs such as Solar Choice, et cetera. When is the next one? Um, there, it's on the website right now. They're scheduled for April. Um, we can get that information to you, though, Tom. I'll check the mobile app. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I'm here to report on our December purchase power. Um, what we did, because it was the end of the year, we looked at um, calendar year year 2016 versus 2017. This first slide uh, depicts the fuel charge adjustment. Um, the orange line represents the fuel charge for the 12 month period of 2016 and the green line depicts it for 2017. As you can see in the chart uh, at the very end we have averages and uh, the average for 2016 was a little over 4.9 cents per kilowatt hour and in 2017 that dropped to 4.6 cents so there was about a five percent decrease in our fuel charge and again uh, fuel charge is a pass-through the RMLD does not make a return on that um, so whatever our costs are those are uh, reflected back to our, our consumers within the fuel charge adjustment the next slide looks at the monthly purchase power capacity and transmission charge. Uh, again, 2016 versus 2017 with the orange representing 16 and the green representing 17. Um, as you can see, um, over the averages, uh, the 2016 was a little about 5 cents and that's bumped up to 5.3 cents in the calendar year. Uh, there's been a, if you look at July, um, the July period, there was a 10% increase from 2016 to 2017. And what's driving that factor is the increase in capacity costs. Uh, as we had said, um, we're in the NEMA load zone and capacity has significantly increased. The budget for the fiscal year 18 versus 17 is a $5 million increase in capacity alone. And so that's reflective, again, in a, in a, in a pass-through charge, our RMLD does not make any return on that. Uh, those costs uh, are passed directly to our customers. The next slide looks at the New York Power Authority credit. This is a credit that residential customers receive. It's based on a federal legislation back in the uh, 80s, I believe it was, where uh, New England. It's been around as long it's, as I have. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So uh, that credit is um, designated for residential customers only, and it's, it's a, the benefit of having hydropower within our portfolio. Um, and that's been pretty, pretty flat. Um, in 2016, it averaged about 4.8 cents. There's a slight increase of 2.7 cents. Doesn't amount to a whole lot of dollars, that differential. Um, so uh, it's, a con it's, again, it's a credit that goes to the residential customers. And then on this last graph, what we did is we, we melded all those. We looked at the fuel charge plus the purchase power capacity charge, and then we, we subtracted the credit. And if you look at calendar year 2016 versus 2017, the 16 average was about 9.448 cents. And in calendar year 2017, it averaged 9.46 cents. So relatively flat. Um, it's anticipated that that's going to be increasing in 2018, and again, the driving factor for that will be the PPC t t t purchase power capacity transmission with capacity and transmission driving that component. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Very good. Nope. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Okay. Hamid, you're up. Winter. Yes. You, you get the, the mic. Is leave the mic where it is. <laughs>
Good evening. I'm here to report uh, engineering operations activities for the month of December. Uh, the first is it's coming. Yeah. Good. There it is. Here it is. Yeah, good. Well, the first slide uh, basically is showing you all the uh, capital improvement projects and the activities and percent completion month, month of December. Uh, so I'm not going to go over uh, uh, all of those projects, but basically these are the ones that the board already approved for uh, 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 constructions. The second slide is showing you engineering operations, the routine capital constructions. These are non-project capital uh, authorizations that we have your activities, this expenditures that uh, you see that. For the month of December, we spent uh, approximately $126,093. That brings year to date to $672,906. The next slide is showing you the facilities, IRD and I IT, the other groups, uh, capital authorization projects, uh, and you see the expenditures for month of December and the remaining balance on those on the right. Uh, all in all, in month of December, we spent 499594 across all categories. That's going to bring the year to date to two million seven hundred thirty-six thousand five hundred fifty-eight dollars and the remaining balance for the rest of the year is 4,948,963. We've got two or three actually capital improvement projects, the heavy ones that they're gonna get started actually next week. For station three, the reactors, we're gonna be rep uh, installing at station three uh, for arc flash, uh, as well as the projects on Woburn Street in Wilmington that we are upgrading the, uh, the infrastructure, the old infrastructure. Uh, so those two, they're coming up, and that's going to drive up, basically. That's what most of the cost is going to uh, be expand. Uh, uh, expand. The next one, uh, the next slide gives you the routine maintenance uh, across all those categories that you see, the transformer replacement, pole inspections, quarrel inspection, the feeders, manhole inspections, and porcelain cutout replacements. We're making good progress on those. We keep continuing upgrading the old age transformers uh, that you know the, that they're out there both in overhead and underground. We're making gr great progress on those as well as the pole inspections that uh, we have 10% of the poles in uh, Reading or 10% of the Reading Municipal Light Department's owned poles inspected every year and the ones that you know, they're failing or they, they need to be replaced. We just take care of those. So far, uh, 165 of those 180 uh, poles that we have replaced and upgraded, they've been uh, transferred and completed. Uh, so uh, uh, we're making good progress on those. Under the routine maintenance, next slide, you see the tree trimming. That program is really going well, and I'm really proud of it. I mean, we, we have made a great progress on those, and you could see that on the future slides that you know how the trend over the five years aver average been going down, so less and less tree in incidents. Uh, Substation maintenance, we infrared scan all the substations on monthly as well as the parks quarterly. And so far, we haven't had any hot spot or sign, uh, signs of deteriorations. Uh, so that's a good program. Underground subdivision upgrade. This is something that newly we, uh, we be, it's been going on at a slow pace, but we have uh, instituted that program in order to address the aging uh, facilities, underground facilities, uh, infrastructures. We recently completed Crestwood Estates in North, Road, North Reading, Aspen Road in North Reading, and Long Hill Road in North threading and we got a number of other projects that are in progress working those these are the ones that we upgrade the uh, underground uh, facilities like cables the elbows and as well as the transformers that they're aging transformers so we actually killed two birds with one stone uh, upgrading the transformers the aged transformers as well as the cables on all the uh, secondaries and primaries in the area so that's Shasta Drive in North Reading West Overdrive in uh, Linfield the Green Briar Drive in North Reading, Great Net Neck Drive in Wilmington, Gandalf State in Wilmington, and Deerfield uh, Place in North Reading. So all the communities, pretty much, you know, they're getting, uh, uh, they, 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 they're addressing the uh, aging infrastructure. 
The next slide shows the Dabber polls. Basically, the ownership is 50-50. We got approximately 16,000 polls. The custodial of the polls in uh, North Reading and half the uh, Reading is uh, with the town of Reading. I mean, no North Red uh, Reading Municipal Light, Linfield and Wilmington. They're fully Verizon set areas. The next uh, slide, my favorite slide, uh, it shows actually we're making progress. Uh, it shows the engines. Uh, that's a program that shows the ball in court basically for all the utilities. Uh, in Town of Linfield, RMLD has five poles to transfer that we are taking care of that. In North Reading, we got 12 transfers and 17 pole bots that got to be removed. If you recall that this number was upright around 99 to 100, so we've been cutting that down and taking care of lots of those. But this is again a moving target, you know, that shows that, you know, we taking care of the f uh, old facilities, both overhead and uh, overhead and uh, underground, as I mentioned. The Reading in Town of Reading, we got 23 transfers and 59 uh, pole bots that they got to be removed. In Wilmington, we got only 10 transfers that we're going to have to take place. It's going to have to take place. And we're making good pro progress on those. The next slide shows you the reliability indices. Pretty much all the reliability indices, SAD, KD, and SAFI, for the entire year in 2017, they were well below the national and the regional average, averages. And... Uh, which is good, as you see, the reliability is in good uh, state of uh, uh, health condition. Um, so we're proud of that. Uh, the last slide is showing the, the causes of outages for past, uh, in 2017, compared to the five years average. And as you see, could see, the equipment are going down, the trees, wildlife, the vehicle uh, accidents, and the weather-related and unknowns, and also nothing under the utility human error so all in all they're making progress and it uh, the, uh, it's good so that concludes my report for them for the year 2017 if you have any okay. questions we're more than happy to go ahead if you would please um everybody knows that we <coughs> recently built the gis system which is a staple for any utility for understanding every piece of asset that we have out there uh, with the latitude and longitude. But it also allows us to, for planning purposes, for all of our maintenance and our capital, it allows us to run different scenarios on the electric electricity and how that runs and capacity and, and why would we build a new substation in Wilmington. And it allows us to do all of those engineering. But al also it validates data that we are not quite sure about. So recently we just found out that we have 212 of these underground subdivisions that are over 40 years old, okay? So while we've been picking at them and Mead and I put them on the schedule for the capital plan, as this GIS data comes back, it, it confirms a lot of what we thought. <coughs> and you know, you're seeing the underground subdivisions that he's got on there for right now, but when the capital <coughs> budget comes up, I just want everybody to be aware that as this GIS data, because you may have said, well, I thought they had everything listed. As this GIS data comes in, you're going to see another bump as we start to put this information into it. And Tyler's still here. <coughs> the Tyler's Tyler. Tyler our GIS guy. So just so you know, I mean, we're, <coughs> we're addressing everything, but, but the, there is aging infrastructure, and right. we are... Now I feel like we've captured almost everything. We're getting there. Until 2035. Okay. we got work right. to do. I will not be here in 2035. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not planning to be over here, too. But at least it's... It's good to have a plan. So what we did, we, we have categorized them based on the age and they prioritized them, which ones they, we need to get first. And, and uh, there's so much to do. It's unbelievable. Okay. So, All right. so when you see those costs and the capital improvements going up, this is one of the reasons that you know one will be capturing a lot, like what Colin said, lots of stuff that you know we didn't know before until we got this GIS round. And how does the GIS uh, give you the age of the system? Well, as they go around collecting the data, they know the nameplate of the transformers. So we got a transformer database already that you know somebody entered the data. It's an Excel sheet. 
But when you go out in the field, there's a name plate that says when that transformer was uh, manufactured. Okay. And then we compare that against our database and we say, okay, this transformer is, what, 20 years? We've got transformers that as old as 40 years, 45 years. Mm. I mean, some of those, I mean, the, the transformers, the life ex expectancy based on manufacturer's definition, the, you know, it's 20 years. So as you go 20 years and up, you know, you're basically pushing it. Right. Okay. And we've got lots of those. So it's amazing they're still operating. <coughs> yeah. Yes, you are absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to echo, you know, for, again, those still listening at home as well, you know, I, I think uh, Colleen's speak team. Loud. Make sure you speak loud so John can hear you. <laughs> John, can you hear me? Uh, no, I didn't hear your last comment, Tom. Sorry. Oh, okay. It was, I hang can't, on, re hang I can't on, remember. Hang it was <laughs> pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go ahead. No, I was just about to say Colleen and her team uh, in all areas, but since we're talking about this, I think, uh, you know, one of the successes of RMLD is really in the last uh, several years is uh, focusing on the capital improvements and infrastructure, and that allows, uh, I think, uh, the RMLD to provide the kind of reliability and cost-effective rates that uh, all of the towns enjoy. So uh, I think it's also a good example, we talked about this a couple of meetings ago, of having a, a program outlining all the needs and then addressing it and right. even though you thankfully didn't go through them all and need <laughs> just looking at the spreadsheet it, you identify a lot of things right. that need attention and they're getting done so yeah. congratulations a Thank absolutely you. right and uh, and well put i mean having preventive maintenance especially in something as important as the electrical system is uh is a absolutely first priority to keeping i mean it's one thing to lose your internet and it's a you know it's a, a nuisance but when you use your lose your electricity uh, it's uh, life-threatening, so it's just so important to keep the maintenance up. Excellent. Okay, very good. Do you need any money? <laughs> yes, uh, you want <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> you want to go to the procurement? I'll be happy to. Okay, uh, move that bid 2018-34 for HVAC and ice machine preventative maintenance and repair service be awarded to the Ambient Temperature Corporation for 89000 Eight dollars pursuant to MGL C30 39M as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager. It is a three year contract. Okay, is that second? Second, second. I mean, you've got to come over here you are and, speak sure. and speak so the, the fellows on the phone can hear you. <laughs> okay, I sit next to Colleen. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, that's great. Next yeah. Yes, go ahead. I, yeah. uh, is for me explaining this one? I, I, I didn't hear the... Uh, yes, yeah, he's going to do it now. We, we're, we're moving him in front of the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm here now. Can you hear him okay? Okay. Okay, okay. As, as yeah, I just want to I, I just understand what this one is and uh, how many bidders and all that. Okay. Yeah, this is the 3039M uh, bid. Uh, it's a tr three-year contract. We send a bid to 24 uh, uh, contractors. Basically, and four only responded. None of them took any exceptions. The lowest responsible responsive bill was $89,808. And the last time that this uh, went out to bid, uh, in the second quarter of 2015, the total cost was $71,368. Mm -hmm. And now the new one, obviously, is up uh, $89,808. Okay. So that's what the story is. With this okay. I didn't hear. I, I'm sorry. I didn't hear all that. It's just supposed to be this uh, meeting. Repeat again. Speak up. Yes, Dave. Uh, you said there was four, four great bids. Yeah, four we, bids had four, we had four. We had four. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Dave, can you hear better now? Yeah, I just put it. Can I hear correctly? It's, it's four. Uh, just that we're all that we're. Yes, the, the, the bid went out to 24 contractors and only four responded. And none of them they took any exceptions, so the lowest bidder uh, was uh, <coughs> Ambient Temperature Corporation for $89,808. And the last time that we went out to bid for the same contract, it was in second quarter of 2015, in December, uh, the, uh, yeah, the second quarter. Uh, and uh, it just recently, the, the contract ended in December uh, for a total of uh, $71,368. So it's gone up approximately. Three years? 
Yeah, yeah, for three years, yeah. Uh, so what, what changed the district? What caused it? I think I think most of it is labor. It's labor. That's what what cost cause it to go up. Yeah, it's a little. It's twenty five percent increase. Twenty five percent increase in labor, basically. Yeah. Uh, we had prices actually. What the the codes they came out. Uh, Eighty nine. The next one up was ninety eight thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars. That was cooling and heating specialists. And then one, the next one up was 126. And actually, the next one uh, for 90,000, I'm sorry, was the Limbaugh, Limbaugh uh, company for 9,931 dollars. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I guess one question. So 20 didn't respond. Any any idea why? Is it uh, not a quick piece timing of timing? And it's a small project, so most of those, you know, they getting into big industries. But this is the worth of the project. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we call them all the time. Right. It's just yeah. the, you yeah. know, what it could be worth. But you know. oh, this is the max. In other words, we might we yeah, might this spend is less the than this. Hourly labor. If you yeah. needed to call them in for right. repair, I mean, yeah. it's it's, um, it's an estimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, very good. Okay, what is the main thing that building PCA system something else? Yeah, an ice machine. We got an ice machine preventive. Ice. Yeah, prevent. It's an ice machine preventative maintenance and repair service and okay. HVAC. Okay, very good. Further discussion? If not, we'll pull the board. Mr. O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, aye. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Mr. Talbot? Mr. Talbot? Aye. Okay, Mr. Sempek? Mr. Sempek, aye. Okay, very good. All right. So, um, thank you. All right. Thank I don't you. know if we have anything under general discussion. Uh, and then setting the next, uh, the next regular monthly meeting will be March the 15th. Well, we're, we're going to have two meetings, right? That way? Right. We'll potentially have the March 12th with the, uh, the meeting. Correct. All right. It, it may be that maybe we can come move the 15th to the 12th, possibly. I'll work with the department on that. Maybe we could do that all in one night and save ourselves that second meeting. Yeah, well, I mean, just... Yeah, that would be ideal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only other thought is, because uh, John Arena also proposed, uh, or more than proposed, asked for a follow-up meeting. Uh -huh. The thought might be to try to leave in place the, Mar the March 12th subcommittee meeting and then commissioner's meeting and then if there's a need to circle back to either the cab or anyone else or whatever, mm -hmm. then you can still resolve everything that week as opposed to having to right. okay. then meet. That's why that. it's ha good to have the two. Yeah, I, yeah. The, I guess the question is, you know, you have t that way there you have two meetings, but it's all in the same week as opposed right. to right. having another one the following week. John, does that better or worse, do you think? Well, I, I think uh, if we can get it resolved on that Monday, which is March 12th, yeah. and then the, 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 if the selectmen have a meeting on the 13th, perhaps a representative from the RMLD, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, reports to the selectmen yeah. as well uh, what the results are so that they have a feel for what we're going to be reporting on. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with it either way. Okay. Uh, if, if everybody's in agreement on the 12th, and I see no need to drag it out to the 15th, okay. except for, of course, if we, what we'd like to do is get tab approval as well. So now that we get a bit large on uh, on Monday the 12th, right? right? Because if we're looking for their approval, uh, they may have to attend as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I assume that there's regular business for the 15th also, right. so. Yep. <laughs> I mean, just as a thought, in, in the interest of you know, giving enough attention units to it. If we focus on, because the meeting on the 12th with the commission is, is really to finalize any issues from the subcommittee. So that that's true. That's right. done. Right. And then you still have the 15th meeting to do a formal vote after the, the cab and select right. have done. And then right. you have your regular meeting. Right. Just be aware that, that the CAB has to vote on this also. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That would allow it well, when to we meet on the 21st of okay. March. So that way, if you're doing the 12th and possibly the 19th, that still gives us plenty of time. Yeah, that, that's okay. fine with me. I mean, okay. I, I think All right, that's uh, fine. Whatever you think is the right order to get okay. the approvals yeah. is just fine. Okay. Yeah. George, just a question. I'm, I'm just trying to keep with the sentiment around getting it resolved, and at the end of the day, 
and it's not that much of a time difference, but I'm just thinking, is there any opportunity for the cab to meet the Wednesday before, so which would be the 14th? I'd have to reach out and see. Yeah. That. Is it worth it? Yeah, that way they would have the 12th, 14th, 15th, and everyone, I mean, that's pending. Yeah. Not have any issues. See what, yeah. see what the if, interest if is. If not, we'll just have to leave it. Right, and no, we'll leave it as the 21st if yeah. that's still, that should be probably, I would suspect with the second meeting that we may not resolve everything on the 12th. With all right. The, with so all the additional that going to the 19th, that leaves yeah. us right there for the 21st. But anyway, so. that's, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Good. Uh, we got CAB meetings February the 28th, which I'm coming. 28th. You got 28th in the agenda. Yeah, I know. Did you just say the 21st? Though? No, the 21st is March. All right. John. Oh, you're meeting next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, John is assigned to that. So, um, if we have something either on the 12th or the 19th, I will go to the March 21st meeting on that. Okay. Um, in place of John. John, you'll you'll owe me one. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair. Yep. Also, I'd like to, uh, uh, for our scheduling purposes, uh, we're going to reach out and see, schedule as far as we can in advance, and I'd appreciate it if you guys could do the same for us. Yeah. Just so we have our... Yeah, yeah we talked about... Are we, uh, yeah. are we good? We're trying to get the year. Yep. Yeah. Hang on try, one minute. One, yeah, one second. That way we're all set in right. advance. Right. The, the uh, CAB members requested that we kind of work and set some dates yeah, in advance so we, uh, they can are, coordinate properly. So we'll, we'll try to okay. Get your, that's right, you are meeting. So All right. right. Yep. Do we have a motion? Uh, let me just revisit one issue on scheduling. So assuming the cab meets on the 21st, and, and I mean, we want to try to tee this up so we have a vote and I think get it done in March would be the desire, right, before town meeting. Mm -hmm. Would we be better served if, if the cab meeting can occur the week before would we be better if people are available to meet March 22nd for our meeting? That way there we'll have had feedback from, allows enough time for back and forth, you know, I would think to get the yeah, thing. I, I cannot be there for March 22nd. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're okay for the 15th though, John? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine for the 15th. Yeah, I, let's, let's I have a business meeting out of town that I yeah. have to be at. Okay. So it tails over into Friday, so let's let's there. play it by. We'll, we'll play it okay. by. Let's play it by here. All right. I mean, there must point. be some way. Yeah. If we get everybody in uh, consensus, we right. should be able to. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Do Good. I have a motion to go into executive session? Uh, move that the uh, board go into executive session for to consider. Um, move the board go into executive session to consider the purchase of a real property and return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Pull the board. Mr. O'Rourke. Mr. O'Rourke, aye. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. aye. Mr. Talbert. Mr. Stempeck, aye. And Mr. Stempeck, aye. Thank you, everybody. Okay. We're good to go. Okay. Return to vacations, boys.